7.14 on this Labor Day. We want to welcome to microphone number two, the Honorable Judge Sean Womack. Judge Womack, welcome, sir. Good morning, Dale. How are you doing? I'm fine. How you been? Oh, better than I deserve. Happy Labor Day to you. Yeah, you too. You know, this is a fun day. You know, just lollygag, do what you want. <laughs> Last big day on the lakes for a lot of people. And, yeah. and, uh, so the you know, the makeup of the Twin Lakes area might start changing a little bit here over the next few days as, as the last of the vacationers the pull out rock, and go home. Yeah. And, so, yeah, I think I'm going to spend my day, once we get done here, I'm going to go up on Current River, Missouri, and horse around most of the day and come back. And a lot of fun. Sounds like fun. So I see you've got your uh, petition for signatures here. How are you doing on that? Good. Uh, we're making a lot of progress. Uh, we've got a little over... Uh, not quite two weeks to go, uh, about a week and a half to go before I have to have them turned in in Little Rock. Uh, we're out going to events, meeting people, uh, campaigning just like we would otherwise, but taking the uh, the clipboards along with us. Uh, wh- what we're trying to do, for, for your listeners that don't know, uh, since I'm running for the Arkansas Supreme Court, that's a nonpartisan race. And instead of paying a filing fee to the parties uh, that most candidates would do, judicial candidates pay a filing fee to the state of Arkansas. Uh, However, because we are nonpartisan, we have the option to try to get on the ballot with signatures. So if we can get 10,000 signatures on the uh, on the petition to get my name on the ballot, then, you know, we can save that filing fee and, and, you know, any of those resources we would use for the filing fee, we could then turn around and and put into other aspects of the campaign. Um, You know, this is buying radio time and things like that. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) How many signatures have you got? Have you counted them? You know, I don't have a hard number uh, simply because we have a lot of people that are helping us. We've emailed them out to people that are around the state that have said, hey, if you'll, if you'll send that to me, I'll print it and, and go get some copies. Those are starting to trickle back in through the mail. But uh, we put on there, if you're mailing it to us, mail it by actually tomorrow's date, September 8th, so we can get it back in time to you know, get them all compiled and copied and ready to, yeah. to take down to Little Rock. Um, so, so that's kind you, of driving me crazy a little bit, not having that hard count. But, we, you know, we do have a lot of people helping. How many are required? 10,000. 10,000 valid signatures. And, and to be valid, they've got to be, number one, registered to vote. Number two, you've got to be able to read them. And, and so, you know, they say you should get a cushion to you know, make so up you for the ones that you need about 12.5 then. That would be ideal. Uh, you you can get do, yeah, at least you can a 20% get cushion. But, yeah. but, you know, we're working on it. And, and you know, we're making good progress. Have a lot of people that are helping, like I said, around the state and uh, and even around this area. So, trying to get to a lot of events. You know, we went to the Mountain Home Harrison football game Friday night. Got a lot of signatures. Did you sweat? Uh, it was a bit warm. <laughs> a little, little muggy out there. <laughs> I told the guys in the press box, I said, I'm going to go find a pizza oven to stand by to cool <laughs> off. <laughs> but I think I made up for it when I walked in here this morning. I. Uh, Set underneath the AC. Uh, I had to move my chair and the microphone because I was right under the vent next to uh, a couple of hanging sides of beef. And, so, this is also the equipment room. <laughs> Got to keep the equipment cool. I understand. I think it just kicked off a minute ago, so we're doing good now. Yeah, I think somebody so, may have hit that button to put it on deep freeze in here. So, wow. So you, the, the, how is this different? You're campaigning statewide, and before you're either state senator from the local district or the House representative rep. Right. You know, I've, I've run a one-county race just here in Baxter County for the state house. I've run a three-county race, uh, Baxter, Marion, and Boone, when I was in the state senate, and then a four-county race for the uh, uh, circuit judge seat that I have I now. I about that one, yeah. Uh, that, that was Baxter, Marion, Boone, and Newton. And each one of those had its own challenge, had its own uh, you know, kind of strategic plan that you had to to work to cover the number of voters you needed to talk to and, and get out and meet and the things you had to do. Tell you what, when you expand that from three or four counties up to, to 75, 75 <laughs> uh, you know, I've always heard what a wonderful small state Arkansas is. Uh, I think it's getting bigger every time I get in my car. Yeah, you know, when. If you were, and I, and I love doing it, I mean, I really do love the campaign aspect of getting out and meeting people and, and going places and talking to folks. Uh, the challenge is when you live in Mountain Home, Arkansas, we've got a beautiful area here. Uh, we're somewhat isolated, and what makes us beautiful also makes us hard to get to. And so, you know, if you were going to sit down and look at a map and say, what would be the most challenging place to launch a statewide race? I think you would have to conclude that it would start in Mountain Home. You know, you're two and a half hours to the nearest interstate. You're, you know, you're, 
<laughs> yeah. So get me going on the highways here. So, but <laughs> you know what's funny? My my youngest son bought a pickup truck in Magazine, Arkansas. Now that's south of I forty, west of Russellville, out in the middle of nowhere. And I looked, and I thought, well, let's ride it Mountain Home to Choctaw, take nine down to forty, and grab the you know. No, and I thought, well, let's go to Huntsville, drop down 23. No, I wound up going from here to Fayetteville, down 49 to Fort Smith, over 40, and down 23 out of Ozark. It was still 232 miles to nowhere. Wow. And I don't know if you got to drive up to the top of Mount Magazine where the lodge is, but uh, yeah, that's it's a pretty. beautiful place up there. So. But I know what you're going through. In fact, when uh, when the candidates are here for governor, both Mike Ross and, and Governor Hutchinson, now Governor Hutchinson, Teasingly, they both of them, ironically, the days they were here, they had to go east to Jonesboro. And I said, I hope you get behind every mom and pa kettle taking the cows to town. And Governor Hutchinson said, well, why would you wish that on me? I said, it's nothing personal, but that way you can see what we have to put up with. You try to go from here to Black Rock or Imboden, and you might average 42 miles an hour. Well, and I'll tell you, actually going and, east from here is the easiest of the trips that we make. Because really? Because when you're going south through the curves or, or going west, uh, you run into uh, you know, more of the mountains, mm -hmm. but uh, you know fewer places to pass, fewer four lane areas, and, and so uh, we just take the advantage you're going to have when you're in the Supreme Court living in Little Rock. You got those nice I forty and thirties and six thirties and four thirties to travel. I don't. I, you said living in Little Rock. I don't think we'll do that. I'll just uh, <laughs> you know, spend as much time in Little Rock as I have to, and then get back here. But. Uh, <laughs> But no, you know, we're kind of getting into the the second phase of the campaign. I, yeah. I announced in late May, the last week in May, uh, we've been through you know kind of the summertime where we're just get getting out, introducing ourselves to folks. Uh, just a little over three months now that we've been in the race, uh, we've been doing some of those summer festivals. You know, we've been over to you know, Tawny Town for the Great Festival and down to oh, Hope yeah. for the Watermelon uh -huh. Festival, and and you know a lot of those things that. You know, that happened there, you know, standing out at the Watermelon Festival in Hope, the heat index was 107 that day. I remember looking at my phone and, uh, and uh, you know, but just just a lot of fun getting out and meeting people in all parts of the state. Yeah. Today, Labor Day is kind of a traditional transition day mm -hmm. in politics. Uh, when people are back from their vacations, they've got their kids back in school, they're getting back on that regular routine and schedule. And so, traditionally, Labor Day has always been kind of a transition into a you know, more serious fact, act of campaign. You know, in fact, a lot of times, schools used to start the Tuesday following. Yeah. Years uh, gone by. And, and, you know, in my in my circuit judge job, one of the things I do is a lot of custody cases. And when we're dealing with kids that are uh, going to school out of state, in fact, bless you, I, I had one just this last week uh, dealing with some kids that were going to be moving to another state. and. You know, the thing they said is school starts there on the day after Labor Day, September 8th. You know, our kids have been in school for three weeks at yeah. that point. And, uh, and, uh, but that is something you're right, especially as you go north, that tends to be the case. They start yeah. later. You know, I'm looking at this calendar, and I want people to realize that with judicial races and the change in the primary, that your election is in March. That's right, March 1st. Uh, Judicial one. Wow. That's right. Judicial races are, are nonpartisan, but our races are on the date of the party primary. Traditionally in Arkansas, that has been late May. Um, you know, I mentioned judicial rules being a little different. I announced late May because we can only be publicly announced candidates for one year before the election. So I announced May 26th. Next year, the, the uh, election would have been on May 24th. Two days later, the legislature changed it from May 24th to March 1st. And so... You know, we had laid out kind of our plan to work a 12-month campaign. Uh, it shortened from a 12-month campaign to a nine-month campaign literally in two days, uh, you know, less than 48 hours after I I was officially in the race. So, you know, we're adjusting to, to kind of fit that part of the calendar and, and, and making those uh, and see, adjustments. Well, the disadvantage I see, though, is the Christmas break and, of course, dreaded wintertime, you know, that prohibits travel sometimes. Hopefully we won't have a... You know, last winter wasn't all that bad, but there's a lot of spoons in those persimmons this year. So a lot of a lot of foggy days in August, and and uh, yeah, if you if you watch those things, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people tongue. are expecting kind of a <laughs> kind of a rough winter. But uh, I don't want to be going to the voting poll on a snowmobile. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I tell you the the reason that the legislature moved it from late May to, to March first. 
is to get in what they call that SEC primary because of the presidential mm-hmm. race. I mean, historically, both parties have picked their nominees by the time Arkansas votes in the primary, yeah. or it, it's you know maybe there are still a couple people in the race, but it's a foregone conclusion who sure. it is. Uh, you know, now you've got Iowa voting on February first, wow. Arkansas votes on March first, and so you know just twenty nine days later. Uh, you know, the only states that come between Iowa and Arkansas, I think, are New Hampshire, South Carolina, and, and Nevada. And then, you know, Arkansas will be in the mix that yeah. this time around. And, and so, you know, that's why the legislature did it. That should drive a, a much higher mm-hmm. turnout in the primary than you traditionally see. And, you know, for me, the fact that I was in the race early, I think, will be helpful to us because, you know, like I said, we've been all over the state meeting voters, talking to folks, doing events, uh, you know, shaking hands, handing out cards, and doing all those things that, that you do. Uh, we're already three months into this, and so, you know, we're looking at, at less than six months to the election now. And, and uh, you know, especially, as you mentioned, if we get into a rough winter, uh, it could make it hard to be you know, you're going, moving around then. So, You know you're going to lose two weeks at Christmas. Right. And Christmas being on a Friday, that puts New Year's Day on a Friday. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, so like January 4th or 5th would be the kickoff providing that for 2016, providing, you know, that the weather is good. You know, I can see, I understand the move that the legislature make, made, but concerning the presidential primary, but I don't know. But well, one interesting thing is early in March. Or, well, the election day is March, uh, March 1st. Yeah. The early voting will actually oh, start. Right. I believe it's February fifteenth, the day after Valentine's Day. Wow! So you know that'll be something that we're not used to to doing, dealing with you know getting out to to vote and vote early in mid February. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the things we talked about about that transitional time, a couple things that that we're doing right now to kind of kick off the fall portion of the campaign, we're having to deal this Friday night. Uh, We've rented the gym at First Baptist Church in Mountain Home. We've hired John 316 Ministries down oh, the other side of Batesville. You, wow. They're, they're going to cater our fish fry for us. They are uh, awesome. They do a great job. And, and uh, if we have time, I'd love to talk a little bit more about them. But, uh, but I want to invite your listeners. Uh, there's no cost to it. Come in. Uh, now, we will be trying to gather some more signatures. But uh, this Friday night, September 11th, First Baptist Church from 5 to 7, uh, doing a fish fry. Uh, just going to have a good time. We're going to eat. Uh, there may be some very short speeches. We're not going to hold people, uh, you know, too long to to listen to to me or or other folks speak. But um, we would love folks to come out and, and join us for that. Uh, might have a few door prizes. So you know, come out. And just you know, have a good time. We're trying to get folks out to meet them, and we're also trying to kind of launch the momentum going into the fall and and get people out and and. Uh, that's going to be fun. So, yeah. yeah, and you know, mentioned John three sixteen Ministries. They, for your listeners that don't know about them, you know, the, it's a it's a men only drug rehab down the other side of Batesville. Uh, one of the most effective rehabs in the in the state. Uh, Phenomenal job. They do a great Phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. Number one because they have the the spiritual component there. It's a faith based Christian organization. Number two, they have a work component. These guys work, I think, six days a week. Um, they don't take any tax money. There's no state or federal funding. There's no uh, cost for the individuals that are going there. Uh, they go and stay six, nine, twelve months at a time, uh, but they're working. And one of the ways they work is they work in this catering. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're learning skills. They've got six or seven other uh, types of jobs that people can work in there. But uh, I went to an event with them in in Jonesboro. They hosted an event for uh, as a fundraiser for their organization. They fed eighty three hundred people that day. Yeah, in Jonesboro, and so you know, <clears throat> the I, mayor had told me about an event over here at. We got about thirty seconds. I got to hurry. Uh, over here at the fairgrounds, right. they got there at four. They fed everybody by seven and had the place cleaned up. Yeah, they do an amazing job. They really do, and so we've hired them to <clears throat> to come cater the event, and we're really looking forward to. Oh, that's going to be that. good. Yeah, they do a great job. We're visiting with the Honorable Judge Sean Womack, and coming up at 7.30 after the news, Fred Ramey will be making his call. Kind of a new feature we're starting on Mondays. We have Fred White and Blue that's normally on audio on demand only. And I said, why don't we do some switch around? Let's try this for a while. So Fred's going to be calling in here after the news. We're going to visit with him till 8 o'clock. 
And hopefully the judge and Alan can stay around here and visit with us as well. Coming up, it's news time on this Labor Day. We'll be right back.